Nico, wake up. <laughs> oh, 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 can hell? What you do let me go to sleep now? Yeah. Ah, did you say the tape's rolling? Mm. Well, look here, I mustn't... I can't go to sleep in the stoop. Time costs money, don't it? You know what I mean? That's what she said last night. <laughs> Yeah, she cleaned me out, she did. I tell you, I don't tell the wife, though. Oh, I'll be in, uh, you know, peruvial shit creek without the old paddle. Or should I say, without the old pussy. Oh, 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 oh. You know, no nookie for a year. Watch out. Might, uh, might, might not even have any nookie ever, because she'll probably chop me head off. Hmm. Yeah, that's a bit, that's a thought. Gotta watch out. Anyway. Look here, you. Welcome to not a lot of people knew that, or know that, or even still don't know it. Notes number three. Love it. Purgatory and Genghis Khan are in your proud possession and you have probably just had a, an assortment of audible boosting out of those speakers right into your lug holes. And you've also got killers in this XR remember tomorrow and running free. Maiden Japan. Released 14th of September 1981, that little lot was. We'll get to that in a minute. Anyway, Purgatory, eh? Genghis Khan, well, the boys, they didn't, they only had the only non Top 50 single ever. Where was I? Hmm. Anyway, well, that's enough of that. Uh, released the 15th of June, Purgatory and Genghis Khan were, or was. Hmm. And it's just been released again, hasn't it? Because you are the proud owner of it, and you're listening to me again. Oh, no, they say. Oh, dulcet tones are down the old. Oh, no, it's Nico. <gasps> well, look here. It's a little bit of trivia for you on this one. I know that not a lot of people know this, because I even didn't know this, and I'm, I'll admit this, I did not know this. All right, I'll say it again, I did not know this. Purgatory was originally called Floating. Mm. And it was part of Iron Maiden's live show between 76 and 77, would you believe? It was originally played at a very much slower tempo than, than what has been played at on, uh, you know, past excursions, so to speak. Well, Steve... He likes to play a little bit faster, he does, see? That's, ooh, I like that too. And uh, he decided, he said to the man, look, uh, I, I like, uh, you know, you don't like this song, you like it too, don't you? That's true. Well, they had to, didn't they? And uh, <laughs> so, uh, anyway, he re they rearranged it and beefed it up for the Killers album. And uh, Say La Vie, or As It Is, Say Quoi, or Say What, there it is, Purgatory. As It Happens, at the right tempo, boom. Love it, because Steve, you know, there's certain songs that are written, we'll get onto that later on, it's a little story, I'll tell you about that too. But, uh, there you go, Genghis Khan, he, that was a, a sort of a fill-in song, if you like, uh, it was written at short notice, that's why it's a short song. <laughs> Stupid idiot. Uh, Maiden discovered they were short of a song on a killer's album, so they sat down and, and sort of went, here, let's, let's sing to something. And uh, it was given a working title of Jenkins' Barn. Uh, God knows why. Genghis Khan, Genghis Barn. I suppose it rhymes, didn't it? Anyway, I don't know, soppy sod. You know, works in mysterious ways, this music business, doesn't it? Anyway, the sleeve for the Purgatory uh, single was originally the Number of the Beast album artwork. And uh, the band decided, well, it was too good to keep for the, uh, you know, too, too good to keep. It was, it was best, it was too good, so they wanted to keep it. Oh, wake up. They wanted to keep it for the next album. God, that hurt. Dave, will you do that for me? Anyway. Uh, they wanted to keep it for the next album because uh, it fitted perfectly with, with the old knob. Well, now, look, let's rephrase that. Knob being an abbreviation for Number of the Beast. Now, we'll get into that later on, all right? So, Number of the Beast, yes. And uh, it, it filled, you know, Steve had this song with him. We'll keep this artwork for the album. So Derek did a new Eddie, and he did it the Eddie Devil sleeve for the single, which you all know, you know, which you're standing looking at or sitting looking at or lying on the floor or on top of your missus or she's on top of you looking at it or I don't know what you're doing, but you're having it in your hand, aren't you? No, the sleeve, silly, the sleeve. Right, that, as I said, it didn't make the top. It didn't get over 50. It got to uh, chart position 52. As I said, where was I? Phew. Would have been up number one. Oh, <coughs> never mind. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, Made in Japan. What can you say about this? This actually was recorded on the band's very first Japanese tour. And uh, the actual Japanese version of this record was titled Heavy Metal Army. And there was no, equi uh, there was no equivalent uh, 
words in the Japanese language for maiden Japan. I would have thought they should have just said it, Madan Japan, and called it that. Well, nevertheless. This was the last maiden release to feature uh, Paul Diano. Uh, as we know, what a great singer. Um, he was with the band for quite a few years, many, you know, quite a number of years, a few years there. But uh, Paul went on to uh, different pastures, uh, green and blue and white and yellow, whatever they were. Um, but anyway, oh, by the way, on a Japanese sleeve, it said, Pray Round. <laughs> Jeez, Pray Round. Uh, it don't take a degree in, in, in uh, English science to work that one out, does it? Hey, does it? What, it? what do you mean, what does it mean? Pray Round. Right, that's enough of that. Anyway, by the way, Rod took all the photographs for this band, uh, for this single, uh, the single, you know, all the, all the live shots uh, for the Made in Japan. And he went down, he went down the old, uh, the old duty-free racket market, you know, like, oh, 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 oh give me money, oh, think of me, Bob, son, you can have this. So anyway, he bought a Canon camera on the cheap, as usual. And uh, actually, this is definitely where Ross got his inspiration from. I mean, what can I say? Rod actually astounded the photo world with his prowess behind the lens. What a great, what a ca- what a cracker, what a cracker. Anyway, by the way, one little point. This got the number 43 in the charts, this Made in Japan. Released 14th of September 1981. And again, if I said it already, too fucking bad. Now, oh yes, this is a joke for you. If the answer to the question is my cock wobbling... What's the question? What's that in my ass, Batman? <laughs> ha ha It's me. You know who this is because you found me, don't you? Sweet Pea's not here, the family's not here, or he's here, he'd have asked him, no, wouldn't he? Uh, now look, leave your name, your number, and all that good stuff, and uh, maybe we'll see you in purgatory, or well, then again, maybe we won't. So, leave your name, your number, and all that good stuff again, after the tone. Bye!